What we got here today is the Echo CS400 Chainsaw. This is a pretty popular saw from Echo. Uh, one of the more popular saws in their lineup because of the price and the power. And you can also get a really good deal on this one if you buy the CS400 VP, which stands for Value Pack, where you get the um, plastic carrying case with the saw uh, for, I think it's another 20 or 30 bucks. So that's a really good deal for this saw. This saw is available with a 16-inch bar and an 18-inch bar. We have the one here with an 18-inch bar on it. The nice thing about this saw is, like we said, it's a decent price for the power of the saw and the size of the saw, but it's a 40.2 cc saw, and it has the Echo i30 starting system, so it's really easy to start. It's pretty lightweight for the size of it, so it's very maneuverable. It's a, a good all-around, middle-of-the-road saw. This saw comes in right under the CS4510 in the Echo lineup, and it's been around for a long time, and like we said, they've sold a lot of these babies. Okay, before we take this thing out here and show you how it runs, we thought we'd go over some of the, uh, the features of this saw and what, make it, what makes it pretty impressive for the price you pay for it. Um, we'll start here at the front. They said you can get this in either a 16-inch bar or an 18-inch bar. That's 3 8 low pro chain on there. It has a dual post handle here for the inertia activated chain brake. And what an inertia activated chain brake is, is if this kicks back, it hits your hand, locks that on, the chain can't move, can't cut your face off or anything like that. And to release it, that's all you do. And now your chain is free to move again. And it has the large windows in there, so it's easier to see through, less of a blind spot. Um, if you're getting down there, cutting overhead, things like that. Here it has this line in there in the housing. That's not just for strength or durability or to make it look cool. That's actually a felling site, so you can keep the saw level when you're cutting through a log uh, or you know taking down a tree. Um, what else we got on here? It's got the I-30 starting system, which makes it way easier to start than a standard saw without it. Inside here is the air cleaner. It's a round air cleaner. Um, air, it's an automotive style air filter and it's a very good filtration system. Also right under this knob here um, is your spark plug. So you take this off, doesn't require any tools, you just loosen that up and it comes right off. Um, but anyway, your air filter is back here. It's a round air filter with a plastic cap on it. Spark plug is right under here, so all that stuff, real easy to get to. It has the rubber vibration dampening system on it. So it doesn't have the springs like on uh, CS4510 or um, you know some of the Husqvarna saws, but it still does a really good job of taking out the vibrations on this saw. This handle, as you can see here, is mounted solid to the tank. And then on the other side, it has one rubber bumper down in there. And uh, it's still, you know, you run this thing, it's not like your hands are going numb or anything like that. For what it is, it's got very low vibrations. Um, really easy to run. It's lightweight, and because it's not shaking and and uh, put your hands to sleep, you know you can run this for a good while without without the fatigue. Back here we have all of our controls right here in one area. All you gotta do is start this thing, flip that up from stop, toggle switch so it's on run. You get your air purge right here. Pump this till it's full of fuel, and then. Give it one more shot, pull the choke out, and that's going to put the choke butterfly shut, but it's also going to put this saw on high idle. There's no throttle lock or anything here like that. For you guys that are thinking that this black thing was a high idle, or you old school guys, nope, this is just a, uh, just a screw there. You can see it's got the hex head on it for an Allen wrench or, you know, a hex key. Um... When you pull the choke out, it locks it on high idle, like your throttle lock would have done that you're used to seeing here. And so you're going to pull the rope. It's going to sputter or it's going to it's going to start up and shut off right away. And then all you're going to do, push the choke off, pull it again. It's going to be running at high idle. And uh, you just let it run for a couple seconds to warm up. Then hit your throttle. You can hear that click right there. That was it coming off the high idle and then it's ready to run. So even when this thing is hot and you go to restart it, pull your choke on. Ooh, a little tough to pull there. Pull your choke on, 
and then shut it off. So now it just locked your throttle. So when you when you squeeze the throttle, it's gonna come off high idle. Just listen. That was it, releasing the linkage the linkage in there and taking it off of high idle. You do not give this saw any throttle when you're starting it. You let it at idle, and that is it. Just pull the rope, it takes care of everything itself. So down here is the fuel tank, um, standard old Echo style gas cap on there, 50 to 1, you know, it's got the, the warnings on there, you can see oil plus gas. Uh, you can see that one there is pretty buggered up too from somebody sticking a scrunch in there to try to open it. Flip up caps would have been nicer, but again, you gotta think price point. Same way with the oil cap, um, again, it's got the slot there for the scrunch, obviously somebody's been using it. Now we mentioned that the air filter, or not the air filter, the, uh, sorry, starter as the I-30 starting system. This also has what Echo calls G-Force, which is basically like the uh, Husqvarna air injection, if you're familiar with that, where it pulls the intake air in through here and it kind of spins the big chunks out. So they go flying out in a different direction and um, it keeps the, the finer, cleaner air going into the air filter and then you got the automotive style air filter in there but the combination of that automotive style air filter and the g4 system here throwing out the big chunks air filter life is uh much greater than on the older saws and the chances of dirt ingestion are pretty slim on this one with the filtration system it's got and the, the g4 system here included into that now underneath here you can get a good look at the uh at the clutch, you can see the clutch drum is to the outside. So your chain brake is in the clutch cover, and with the hub or with the uh, yeah the drum and the clutch to the outside, the sprocket to the inside, that helps move your bar and chain closer to the center line of the saw, which makes it easier to rotate and maneuver around. So that's definitely a plus. Um, pretty simple under there. You can see right there. That slot head right there, that's the adjustment for your oil pump. Got the indications there on the on the case, on the housing. That's to change the flow rate of your oil pump. And usually, once you get that set up, you don't have to change it again, uh, unless you're changing bar length or something like that. Uh, most of the time, people with the buy one of these saws, they don't mess with it at all. But it's there, you know, use it if you want, to each their own. So, for the most part, that's it. Um, <laughs> once we start this thing up, you're going to notice that this muffler gives that old school echo sound. You know, uh, if you ever ran echo equipment or echo chainsaw specifically, you'll know what I mean when you hear it running. Over here, we've got the two bar nuts. They're not captured, just regular flange nuts and chain, chain tension adjuster on the outside. All the information for your bar and chain, well, for your bar at least, is right here etched into the bar. That's going nowhere. The paint comes off, that's still in the bar. You won't be able to lose that too quick. So if you've got this information, you're gonna be able to get yourself a, a new bar or a new chain to fit that bar. They do put stickers on the top of these saws. And you'll notice this one says 16A, blah, 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 blah. That's because this one originally came with the 16 inch bar and somebody put the 18 on it. That's why our bar says 18A, blah, blah, blah. So. Uh, one other thing it's always important to know about your equipment is one of these saws, they used to have a plate on them for your model, serial number, that kind of stuff, uh, or a sticker, you know, on some of them. Now they have it etched into the case right there, like on this saw, front and center, uh, real easy to find, real convenient, and you're not going to lose that anytime quick either. So if for any reason you need to know the serial number of your saw or the exact model of it, there it is. And it's got a little QR thing there, so you can scan out your phone if you want. Uh, this is a good all-around saw for the money. I uh, can't make that any clearer. You know, for what you're getting and what you're paying for it, it's a heck of a deal. Especially if you spend the extra money to get the value pack and get the plastic chainsaw case, where you, you can keep your oil in, a wedge, an extra chain or two, an extra spark plug, your scrunch clips into it. Um, it's one of the square plastic uh, chainsaw cases so it's not going to roll around in your truck or anything like that. You know, you can stack it on a shelf, whatever. Uh, really good, really good to have. Really good buy. Um, these things have been out for quite a while. 
a lot of good reviews on them, a lot of positive feedback. Um, yeah, really don't know what else to tell you about it. Uh, if you get the chance to run one, try one out. You'll see it's it's a lightweight saw, and it's got good power for the weight of it. 40.2 cc, you know, it's, yeah, it's not going to run a 20-inch or 24-inch bar all day long or nothing, but this 18 here is good enough. And if you put the 16 on it, it's going to feel like you're setting the world on fire because it's going to have power to spare at that point because it's turning a shorter chain. So uh, we're going to take this thing out here. We're going to fire it up run a couple cuts through some firewood and uh, just show you how it does and uh, let you hear how it sounds.